In this video, I'm going to introduce the laws of indices. Now, these laws you should have come across at some point in the past. So this really should be a bit of a recap. So I'm going to run through them and let's see what you know. So the first law is that if you have x to the p times x to the q, then this is x to the p plus q. Okay, so that's our first thing to remember. Now an example of this, to show them how it works, is that if you've got 3 squared times 3 cubed, then this is 3 times 3, that's the 3 squared, multiplied by 3 times 3 times 3. That's the 3 cubed. And so you can see that we have 3 to the 2 plus 3, 5. 3 to the 5. So, following on from that, is that if you've got x to the p divided by x to the q, then this is x to the p minus q. Okay, where the order does matter. So if you've got something like 3 to the 5 divided by 3 squared, then you could represent this as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 divided by 3 times 3. And then, cancelling 3's, so 3 can go from the bottom, it can go from the top, from the bottom, from the top, and you're left with 3 times 3 times 3. So 3 cubed. So 5 take away 2. The next rule says that if you've got um, anything to the power of 0, then this is just 1. Okay. Now, this is a little bit more interesting in the sense that, of where this comes from. And this is because if you took an example like um, 3 to the power of 5 divided by 3 to the power of 5, then we know that any number divided by itself is 1, okay? except for 0. We don't know what that is. So using our rule here, that must mean that we've got 3 to the 5 minus 5, which is 3 to the 0. And we've just said that three, one number divided by itself must be 1, so this number must be 1. And I could repeat that for any number I like. So x to the 0 is 1. Another rule says that if you've got x to the p and then you put it to the power of q, then this is x to the p times q. Okay, so the indices multiply together. So an example of that is 3 squared cubed. So this would mean that I've got 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared. And using the rule that I learned from the first from the first rule, that is 3 to the 2 plus 2 plus 2, which would be 6. So the 2 times 3 makes the 6. And last but not least, okay, well actually, not last, I've, got, I've just thought of another one, so I'm going to go with another one after this. So if you've got x to the minus p, okay, so if you've got a negative power, then this is 1 over x to the p. Okay, so the reasoning behind that, an example of that, would be something like 3 to the minus 3. So that's 1 over 3 cubed. So that would be 1 over 27. I won't bother writing that. Okay, now where does this conclusion come from? If you had 3 to the power of 3, and you multiply it by 3 to the power of um, minus 3, okay, then in the way that we're writing, we've got 3 to the power of 3 times 1 over 3 to the power of 3. 
And that's where we get this 3 power 3 times 1 over 3 to the power of 3 would be 1. Because this is the same as 3 divided 3 to the power of 3 divided by 3 to the power of 3. And so, this must work out that it is this 1 over 3 to the power of 3. Because not just in the way that it's written there, but I also showed in this previous step that because of the multiplication, the indices add together. So this is the same as 3 to the 0, which we also know is 1. Okay? So this is a rule as well. And now, last but not least, okay, finally got there, is x to the power of 1 over p. Now this one is the pth root of x. And so if you have x, so let's say we had um, 8 to the power of 1 third, then that is the cube root of 8, which would be 2. Okay, so this is how an index is used, and these are the six rules that you must remember and you must be able to use.